Johnny. Good morning. Jefferson County prosecuting attorney with no jurisdiction whatsoever on this show, Matt Harvey. Matthew. Good morning. I have citizens arrestability, like like anybody, everybody else. Does anybody do that anymore? Citizens I mean, arrest. Um, it used to be like a punchline in 1970s. I hear Bill Pyle yelling citizens that. Citizens yeah. arrest. <laughs> citizens yeah. arrest. Uh, yeah, that's actually a thing, and it, and it exists, and I wouldn't recommend it because of the liability and other things. But, yes, if someone's breaching the peace, the citizen has the right I, to. I don't think mm. that in, in 2024 there's any danger of a citizen's arrest. The, the typical reaction is to get out your phone and start recording it so you can post it on yeah. your well, Whatever social media page is, to try to get right. paid for it. Well, there's also a thing, <clears throat> a, a tortious act, I think, called false arrest. At what time, at what point oh. have I actually arrested somebody? If I just block your way or do I have to put hands on you? What is, that what is, defines arrest? I am not going to. <laughs> not, not, not I'm not going to give involved. a legal opinion on that because that was right now, involved, without, with without doing a lot involved. of research on the nuances okay. of All that, right. John. That's Because right. that, there's people listening, and I don't want to get anybody in trouble okay. without. All right. All right. So uh, before we begin with uh, Kimberly Nelson, I just want <laughs> my buddy Alex Gasserud was on Facebook this morning, and uh, we, we I got a lot of mileage out of Alex's uh, border comment because because it was uh, it, it got a it got a good punchline going. But Alex said, "Ask Rob if he still cares more about women and children at our border than the women and children born in this country." I'm not sure if Alex is. I assume he's being funny. He's got a good sense of humor. But uh, if you're being serious, Alex, I'm kind of sad <laughs> for you on that one. But if you're joking, ho hopefully you are. I, I get the joke. Uh, anyway, uh, to our next guest, Kimberly Nelson, who is an incumbent city councilwoman with the uh, city of Martinsburg, Ward 4, hey. and is running for, since you were appointed, I guess it's not re-election, it's running for election, I'm told, because nope. you were appointed the first time, correct? Well, this will be my third Oh, you were appointed so, then elected. Okay, so yeah. we're safe by saying re-election. That's right. Very good. And you first got on in 2020? Uh, no, first got on in 2019. 2019. It was by an interview process. These, right. There was an opening on council. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the council decided they needed to fill the position, so how do you do that without calling for an election? So they called for uh, resumes and letters of intent and interest, and uh, there were nine people who came forward, some really good people that came forward, and um, they selected three to interview. I was mm -hmm. one of the ones. Um, in th through the interview process, I found out a little bit later the other two people um, had 10-minute interviews, like yes, no, said what they needed to say, and then it was done. And my interview lasted about 40 minutes. Um, I tend to come up with a lot of ideas. I really engage with people. So there's quite a conversation between me and the other council members at the time. Um, I can give you a perfect example. I, I, I said, let's play, let's play kind of a word association game. I'll say a phrase, a word or a phrase, and you tell me what pops in your head. And I said, New York City. And they said, the Big Apple, like four people did. I said, Nashville, Tennessee. And they said, uh, country music capital of the world. And I said, uh, Austin, Texas. And somebody said, live music capital of the world it was like a game show almost and i was a like, good one you know and then i said martinsburg west virginia and it was silence i said that's the problem martinsburg needs to decide who it is and we become that together so now in 2024 if i say martinsburg west virginia what pops into your mind kimberly what pops into my mind is a city on the up and up, on the move, in development. Um, it is, the arts are coalescing. Um, one of my next projects, if you will, is um, activating all of the artists that we have in town. We have some substantial talent in musicians, uh, the visual arts, uh, theater arts, and getting that to come together so that Martinsburg looks like a town where people want to go to have fun. People who live here mm -hmm. know that they can be engaged in just about anything that they want to, and uh, to attract tourists to come here. I want it to. I want Martinsburg to be the city that people think of as something fun to do, like go to see a show. <laughs> Um, go have some good eats. Yeah, you have you to know? have a vibrant entertainment district in a downtown area for that area to thrive. 
Exactly. And you have to have active downtown residents, which is beginning to happen with the new apartments it being It is. It's really wonderful. And personally, um, I was talking to a, the mom of a former student of mine. And this former student who I had in the fifth grade is now 21 years old. And she said that her daughter is so excited about putting in an application to be a part of, I think they're called the interwoven lofts. Mm -hmm. So I might say the interwoven apartments or the interwoven or, you know, the sock factory. It's gone by a whole lot of different names, you know, in the community. But I think that's what they're calling it. Mr. John. So so the art center that you're talking about would be what I would call the Queen Street Corridor, the historic part of of Martinsburg. Queen Street Corridor would definitely be involved, but if you think about uh, East Martin Street right there, we've got Stoney's right across the street from the theater. So, right, so the Old Town show. area in, in, in general. You bet the Old Town so area. So what do we do mm-hmm. about, you know, Martin Street is beautiful, mm-hmm. and and then, then you get race street areas a little mm-hmm. less so right go down to w- where interwoven is sure. and to get there you got to get past that Seven Eleven corner mm-hmm. and there, so uh what th- what is the coordination that is necessary to to bring in to make that attractive to people right that starts with pe- apparently the the interwoven lofts is that what they are are, are renting aggressively so it's, it's they're marketing it, you know. As, oh, I've heard as it was like would. seventy-five units of. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. It's just the word but aggressive. I was like, no, what? no. I mean, <laughs> in, a, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're gorgeous. They're, they're, I took a tour of them. They're. I haven't fantastic. seen them yet. They're I'm anxious to. Yeah. So, uh, but but that area, in order to attract more and more mm-hmm. um, high income people, you need to have a, an attractive area. So, is it the high income people buy up? and improve the various corners or the various corners have to improve first in order to make it attractive to bring in more high income people. I mean, how how does that process work? Okay. Well, kind of an interesting way that you phrase that because you can't say, Hey, if you're high income, come over here, please. But you got to attract them. But let's say people with really good jobs. Okay. Um, Because the person that I'm, I brought up the 21 year old, she has a job at a bank. That's just, you know, a basic good job. So, um, when you develop the empty spaces that we have in town we have a lot of empty spaces so that factory that's been defunct for decades you know a real source of blight um, the biggest sock factory in the world i think at one point now is going to be these beautiful apartments and they have um, all this iron architecture in there like they kept the factory oddness you know mm-hmm. inside the apartments that's what that monument i've seen the photos does. it's impressive it, it is. is impressive. and then everything else that's outfitted is just like really nice granite be- beautiful fixtures huge windows they all have blinds but they're just so architecturally interesting to be in they make you feel good because they're the ceilings are huge and the windows are huge so um that is going to attract young people to move in there the more people you have with jobs, the the more that little corridor that you mentioned with the 7-Eleven, that's sort of a, you know, is historically not been the best looking area right there, will look more like a convenience store, the thing that it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. You have more people walking around, walking their dogs, you know, just out and about, and it just, it feels safer. So I've gone there many, many times. I've talked with a new owner. He's delightful. He's working the counter. Um, and I think it's improved greatly. Oh, and, and let me make it clear. This is not an indictment of the 7-Eleven or the people who work there or anything else. It's <laughs> yeah. just, there's just a Thank feel of, of that area, especially sure. at night. You sure. go down there. It's sure. just, it's a, it, it's not. Yeah, John, I it, think it's, it's May 30th. On July 11th, it's free Slurpee Day. So let's not offend yeah. the 7-Eleven okay. yeah. owners yeah. before no, no, no. we get our free and Slurpees. That's, <laughs> and, that's, and that's not at all what I'm trying to do. This is not well, about that 7-Eleven. It's about that. With private enterprise, when you have the investment that we're creating in Martinsburg, you're going to have the inevitable uh, people wanting to redevelop that entire corridor. So that's going to happen with the market. Well, and ultimately, the challenge, I think, mm-hmm. across across the board for the city and the, and the various counties is to attract new industries to come to this area mm-hmm. so that the people who are living in the, the lofts aren't commuting back to Virginia and Maryland for their jobs and then just sleeping here. Sure. Well, they do have walking distance to the train station and they can take a nap on the train if they want. I had a friend who worked at the Smithsonian, did that for 23 years. Um, and, um, or 
I mean, they, they like being able to come home and then walking around the area. Um, there is a facility that is going in on North Queen Street. Um, it's going to bring about 100 jobs. So from high school to PhDs, as I understand it, when I was talking with the owners, mm -hmm. um, you can already see the process of it being um, cleaned up. So I'm talking about 20 acres of... It, it, you have to go north on Queen Street and right around Pennsylvania Avenue. There's a big apple crusher thing there. That's what I'm talking about. 20 acres, you go down the hill. And it's been really defunct and weird for a long time. Like, hmm. you don't even want to go down and look. And now they're cleaning it up. Um, and it's, I believe it's going to be a fantastic facility there, bringing exactly the type of high-tech business that okay. you're talking about. Mr. Harvey? So you're a school teacher, correct? I am. How long have you been a school teacher? Since 2001. And um, how has your, your, your job as a school teacher profession, how has that helped you with being a uh, councilwoman? Oh, goodness. Well, I certainly have a kind of a, um, a scope of... Well, let what, me ask you this. Oh, what, 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 okay. what grade do you teach? I teach first through fifth grades. I pull kids out and I do really hard work with them. Okay. So that's, I think that would probably suit you really well. Dealing with <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I work with some characters. <laughs> it, cer it certainly you, sets you well, up for success <laughs> dealing with us three. Exactly right, right. She's that's, she's been able to handle us perfectly mm -hmm. because of that, her experiences. No, but go ahead. How that how that plays over? Well, seriously, you you have to kind of as a teacher, you have to kind of figure out where a person is in their understanding. So if somebody is needing to talk about something or to complain about something. I really listen to them. Um, and sometimes I'm literally taking notes. I do that on council while I'm sitting there and listening to petitions from citizen or if we have public hearings and people come to the microphone, I'm taking notes of who they are, what their thoughts are. Um, and um, so you find out exactly where the person is and then you can build on it from there. Like instead of kind of starting at the beginning and like, yeah, 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 I already know that, you know, your listener might say. so you want to be able to build on what they already know. So that's how being a teacher has helped a lot because I'm having to convey some ideas to people that are not popular at first blush. Or if somebody comes in with this blast of negativity, ugh, you know, that's really hard to overcome. So um, it has been a big help uh, to be a teacher. Um, I'm sure patience. That's another thing. Oh yeah. Because people sometimes, they just need to vent. They just need to be heard. Um, people will write me emails or they'll call my phone number. And everything's listed on the city website, everybody. Uh, KN Nelson at cityofmartinsburg.org. And I will actually go to the place first, like check out the situation that they are concerned about. And then I will call them back and write them back. And that way I feel like I have a whole lot more facts when I go to approach them and, and more understanding. So Sounds reasonable. Yeah. yeah. You know, it occurs to me, <clears throat> I don't live in Martinsburg, mm -hmm. so I don't have a dog in the fight, as it says, but I, I've, mm -hmm. I, I've said on this show a number of times that the problem with politics these days is there's a crisis of imagination. And sure. I, think, I think half <laughs> of leadership is imagination. Yeah. The, the ability to look at a problem and see it not as a problem, but as the opportunity. Sure. And, and to be able to look at it, to ask the questions mm -hmm. that lead people to maybe expand. Yeah, okay, we've always done it this way, but maybe do it that way. That's right. And so when I think about a teacher in a role like that, that's kind of what teaching is all about. It's getting kids who who are locked up. You know, we all remember that, that thing where... Uh, I'm, I do not understand what you're talking about, right? Whatever the subject uh -huh. is. And it's up to the teacher to say, well, okay, how about this way? And, and, oh, yeah. and, and looking at it from the different angles. So I, I would see that that's in, in terms of making improvements to the city mm -hmm. or in, in terms of getting a project through or we're just dealing with an upset constituent. Sure. There's, yeah. there's always a different angle. So I would think that that's an area where being a teacher, just that skill set would be very valuable. Thank you. Yeah, and it's actually the case because if, uh, if a child especially doesn't understand something a certain way that I've taught it, then I it's always on me. It's not the learner's fault they're not getting it. I think it's the, the teacher's responsibility to try to figure out a different way to reach that person. I do that with grown-ups as well. You know, try to see like what it is that really gets them going, understand them, repeat back to them what I'm hearing so they know that I get it. And then I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best with this and 
you know, carry on. Kimberly Nelson is our guest. She is the incumbent council candidate of Ward 4. Uh, there are three uncontested seats on the city council. We're not interviewing those candidates because obviously there's nobody else to vote for. <laughs> so that, that doesn't become an issue there. But Kimberly is in a contested seat. Uh, what does the city of Martinsburg do well right now? And what do you need to do better? Hmm, good question. Uh, well, what I think we do well is that we really listen to people. We have a fantastic city manager. The city council members individually are very um, respectful of each other. We get along well. Um, we pull forward together. Even when we have to go into a closed door session for executive session, you know, a, a matter of real sensitivity, um, we're really decent to one another. There's no, there's nothing fractious or, or difficult in those discussions. Um, so what we do well also is provide basic city services and that willingness to be creative that you mentioned there, John. Um, you know, to take a look at it and go, huh, what, let's see if we can do this. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. So one of the ways I go about things is um, I like to deal one-on-one -on -one with um, city management. Um, so I'll go into the city manager's office or I'll go into the director of community and uh, development, Shane Farthing. But let's just focus on Andy Blake, for example. <laughs> so I'll go in and I'll have a conversation and I'll say, hey, we've got this situation where we love our trees. Gosh, we love our trees. It creates beauty, lowers the temperatures in buildings. It just gives people a better sense of place. But, you know, over the decades, those roots can start to lift sidewalks. What are you gonna do the way it is right now in the ordinance the owner of the building is responsible for the upkeep of the sidewalk in front of their building whether it's a house or a, or a business whatever mm -hmm. it is and uh, you know it, the the reasonable person would say that's not really fair you know so um we're having these difficult back and forth you know in private and here i am saying it on the radio and uh, um but what Andy does, he's very proactive, detail-oriented, creative, and I'm just like, Andy, can we just figure out how much it would cost to do something and then just think about it from there? So that's what he does. He found, um, he put out a bid, an RFP, they're called, Request for Proposals. 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 Thanks. And uh, this company came back saying, we can do this for you. Uh, of all the lifts, so any lift in a sidewalk, two and a half inches or, or below, from, so imagine this, Ray Street on the north down to uh, King Street, both sides of the street, of course, and King Street from the park all the way to Winchester. So the most highly trafficked sidewalks, right? Mm -hmm. highly, the most pedestrians would be on King and Queen Street in those locations. That company is willing to shave down all those cracks and level the sidewalks, not make little tripping edges, for $80,000. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, that's a really good price. Now, that's going to go on the June agenda for the city council to approve of. And I, I know my colleagues pretty well, so I feel confident that they will approve of this um can't make promises but it what, does seem or well, creates a liability mm -hmm. if you don't well if the if the property owner what if they object what or, if the property owner objects well wouldn't that be something having the property owner object to a free service to eliminate a liability for them well you might be surprised but but i i, 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 I know the, i am the sometimes. question uh -huh. the question is do you, does it require the city to get the individual consent of all the property owners since the sidewalks are owned by the, they go with the parcel because you're not you're not making I, improvements to a, a that, public I, property i'm not sure exactly how to answer that that seems a very lawyerly question well andy's a lawyer he's, i I'm know sure he, it, but I, <laughs> andy is not here right now sure wish he was um well i'm saying that he's probably thought of that since yeah, he is a lawyer sure i i Gosh, that's interesting. It's really weird. When I was talking to Mark Baldwin, the last city manager was like, Mark, let me get this straight. So I go to Lowe's and I buy a bag of cement. I own this cement and I put it, in, I mix it with water that I own and pay for. And then I put it into the sidewalk. It gets hard. And now the city owns it. And he said, yes. <laughs> 
It doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> I'm responsible for a sidewalk I don't own. Right. Yeah. So the city will, uh, according to uh, Mayor Knowles, mm -hmm. uh, if, if uh, he is reelected and then you, it sounds like you're on the same path, you folks would like to take over that responsibility from the business owners or the, or the residents. certainly like to do it at least one time. I'll yeah. say that. We had to do that in my neighborhood recently throughout uh -huh. the entire uh, thing, shaving sidewalks and whatever, and some of them had to come out. And It's an expense, I mean, and, but it's a liability if you don't. Sure. It is an expense, but it's a whole lot less per business when it's done collectively. In mass. Yeah, absolutely. Mass. Hey, uh, yeah. As 10 years from now, envision Martinsburg for me. What do you see? 10 years from now. This is right up your alley oh, as a creative boy, person. it is. Yeah. Um, I picture um, an arts district, as I mentioned earlier, something that's more defined. Um, and if not just the entire King Queen Street area, that one that connects up the, the, the Apollo, the train station, the roundhouse. And it's a destination where people want to go. I want to have Martinsburg known as this little jewel of a town. Uh, to have respect for its past, but really look to always improving itself and uh, renovating itself. Um, and um, I see, okay, I, I have big I have big ideas for the roundhouse. I know that is an entire conversation. Please, go right ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, right now in its current configuration, it can't be done. However, um, Using your imagination and what's in front of you, please consider the interwoven, right? Mm -hmm. Defunct for decades, cool as can be. And now a company that specializes in buying up old, old buildings and renewing them in some other capacity could do that very thing with a roundhouse in a public-private relationship where the roundhouse itself is uh, completely... Mm, maintained the that huge turntable restored but it being kind of a museum within an atrium within an event center mm -hmm. a a real professional event center not with gravel on the ground that you know I get little you. gravel dust I comes feel up. the same way a real event center an HVAC system an H yeah where people can stay think think of um Think of a city that wants to have lots of visitors come to mm -hmm. it for a small convention, have a place for them to um, lay their heads at night right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Restaurants, uh, bars, pubs, easy walking distance to the other ones that are right there, and then maintain that place and also have it as a kind of a museum within that space because that is the first place where there were... Um, the, the first labor strike in the United States. That's hugely significant. Mm -hmm. The place where Stonewall Jackson burnt down the original roundhouse, I think it was built up like a year and a half later. So the one that's there is very old, but not the first one. And that Stonewall Jackson's troops managed to steal all of the locomotives, hitch them up to teams of horses, and drag them down to Winchester, Virginia. Strong horse. What? <laughs> yes, exactly. So all of that is history, I think, that's really unique to Martinsburg. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a really cool town. I, I, parking. Were you going to say parking? Would you like to comment on parking? <laughs> I guess you get 60 seconds. Solve the parking problem. If there is a parking problem. I've, when I go downtown to yep. Martinsburg, I've not had a problem I've parking. I've never had a problem. But the people most, say it's a parking nah, problem. The most I've ever had to walk, even for one of those festival events, is two, two and a half blocks. Right. And there are all these old parking lots here and there. But if we were to have a parking garage, I think it should be privately owned as an attached in some form to that huge event center yeah, that I'm talking about. Permanent. And by huge, Martinsburg's version of huge. All right. Uh, you've got the final 30 seconds. Why should people vote for you for your Ward 4 seat? I care about this city very, very much. I've been living downtown for 20 years. I'm full of ideas. I'm great with follow through. And I have developed... I think wonderful relationships with um, different, like the police, the fire chief, the city manager, uh, my colleagues. I listen to people. I follow through with people. And I've been on city council for five years, and everybody keeps saying this city keeps looking better and better. Kimberly and Nelson, best of luck to you in the upcoming election. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here this morning. Mm -hmm.